I've travelled to a lot of different places, seaside resorts and what have you. I still think Llandidno's up there with the best. We're not the queen of Welsh resorts for nothing. If you've got the mountain, you've got the sea, what's not to love? Look, all the way around, it's like 360 degrees of pure beauty. Llandidno, a vibrant seaside town. At its heart, the pier. How do you explain Clandidno Pier to somebody? It's the finest Victorian pier in the world that stands in one of the most beautiful settings in the world. This marvel of Victorian engineering first opened its gates in 1877 and at a staggering 700 metres is Wales's longest. We're looking at the pier day in, day out, going round it maybe 10, 15 times a day. It's it's majestic. This is the story of the men and women of the pier and a way of life in tune with the tides. This is our one hour sail this morning, folks, upon which we will be viewing the Great Orm. The wildlife. If you buy a donut, you best buy a donut for the seagull. They're very clever and they'll come and rob every bit of food off you. And the tourists. To run a hotel, you've got to be, I think, a little bit bonkers. Most hoteliers tend to be jacks of all trades. Got to keep these windows clean. It's the uh, biggest window on the bay. It was a the Punch and Judy's been here since 1860. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to carry on the tradition. I've never worked anywhere like it, but like, it gets in your blood. It's a way of life. It really is a way of life. Never the same two days running, you know? You get the dolphins coming into the bay and you get the boats coming into the bay. It's, it's brilliant, absolutely fantastic. I mean, look at the view out the office window, it's absolutely stunning. We follow the highs and lows of the summer of 2021 as life gets back to normal after difficult times. Worrying times, a lot of pressure on. We'll do what we do and we'll make it happen. If we can get a nice August, we'll be in business. We'll be talking about our offshore bank account. After the difficult year that people have had, this is what everybody needs now. Every morning when you get up and you get that view, well, you'd be bonkers to hate it, wouldn't you? It's a nice place to be, you know, it's, it's a very pretty town. You know, a lot of local people are very proud of London, you know, very proud of where we live. And we all feel very fortunate to live in such a beautiful place. I think Clandidno is a, a one-off location in the world. You've got a sweeping bay, you've got two big orms, and the pier just juts off at the end of the bay. There's not a pier like it. Normally piers strut out from a straight piece of land, and this is where this is different. It, it struts off of a bay. The view you get from that is like an amphitheatre. It's a one-off. I can see why the Victorians built this in the first place. Well, the pier is relatively the same. The majority of it is as it was when it was first built, which is really nice how things have been kept like that. The original pier was built in 1877 and opened in August. So she's nearly 150 years old which is some going for a structure sat half a mile out at sea.
The pier's never-changing character is due in part to its protected Grade II listed status, awarded back in 1969. It's also due to the pier's current owner and his passion to maintain the original charm of this local landmark. What's it like owning a pier? That's a good question. It's, are we mad? We don't feel like we own the pier. We, we're just guardian of the pier. We look after it for future generations. You have to respect this property and respect the history, what it means to the local people. Adam Williams is head of a successful family business and current owner of Llandidno Pier. As I was growing up, did I think I'd ever own a pier? No, it certainly didn't cross my mind when the teacher said, what are you going to do when you grow up? Owning a pier wasn't on that list. <laughs> Sometimes I think, should it ever be on that list? But no, it's, it's, it's a love affair. My family history, we go back over a hundred years in entertainment, hospitality. My father and grandfather were showmen, traveling funfair. Goes back to my granddad and, and, and before that. And on my mother's side, they were farmers from Wales. And as different as that might seem, the cultures are very, very similar. Growing up, um, I, I spent a lot of time on the farm but also we had other leisure attractions in the North Wales coast. So it was a very bizarre mix and, and quite a different childhood. One of the family's largest attractions is the fun fair at Towin near Rill. Adam's father, Billy Williams, was a bit of a local legend and expanded the family business beyond the fairground and into the world of horse racing, building Tier Prince Raceway right next to the fun fair. Yeah, yeah, my dad was quite a character. He also got into horse racing and he built a horse racetrack. And he always admired the pier. So yeah, I think he would be uh, very proud of having this in our family company. What greater leisure attraction could you possibly own and put in a portfolio of leisure attractions than the jewel in the crown of peers. He would have loved it. He would have been in his element. He'd be here every day, entertaining people. I'd have loved to see what he thinks. Clandidno Pier is, is different in many respects to a lot of other peers. The first difference, which I think is the only pier of its type, has two entrances. So you've got one entrance at the neck of the pier and one entrance to the left off of the promenade. Now that's because the neck of the pier was built first, then several years later they extended it round to the promenade. And I don't believe there's another pier in the world that has two entrances. From the promenade we, we split the pier into areas. So as you enter from the promenade that's where a lot of our retail, the amusements, and we keep the noise and busy activities at that end, all the way until you get to the second entrance, which is actually the original entrance, and then we've tried to keep the neck of the pier as it was originally built. That takes you all the way to the end, and at the end of the pier then you've got bars, coffee shops, amusements, but all still housed in the original buildings. I think that's the big difference with Clandidden. You can walk in the middle of the pier and it's as it was nearly 150 years ago. There's very few piers in the country that you can do that. And, and that stands out, especially in this environment. Yeah, this is the heart of the pier. This is, this is what pays for the pier, the upkeep. Without this, the pier ceases to exist. It's as simple as that. Every arcade has the same smell, and I think it's the same smell from years. It's always been the same, I remember as a, as a child, 10 year old, been in an arcade with, with my father. And it all feels the same. But this is where the, 
the funnies. This, this is the heart of any seaside resort, isn't it? This is what we all remember. It's not a business. If this was a business, I wouldn't be doing it. Working all these hours, and we do work all these hours, seven days a week. We love what we do. Generations of my family have got me to where I am. I've got to respect them and not let them down. Yeah, people don't realise what weights on your shoulders in that respect. Am I slightly crazy owning a pier? You might say so, it's, it's a big risk. Depending on the weather, a day like today, I'm probably the luckiest man alive to own such a structure. We've got a lot of plans and we plan to develop and, and just upkeep it for future generations without altering the heritage. Because I think heritage is so important. Sandidno Pier, a Victorian marvel strutting 700 metres out into the Irish Sea. Since its construction in 1877, its iconic design has caught the eye of many artists and photographers alike. We're blessed to have such a great pier and the fact that it's in such good working order. It's just beautiful, um, everything about it. Lynn Morris is a local graphic designer who's turned her passion for all things seaside into a new business venture situated on the pier. I've been a graphic designer for 34 years, recently made redundant. Photography and crafts was my hobby. Being made redundant was the push I think I needed to set up a business. I was doing some artisan fairs locally and somebody mentioned the pier and sent them some samples of my work and fortunately they absolutely loved it and here we are. I have a unit and it's going really well and, and I'm absolutely loving it. Photography was my hobby and I used to do all this creative type of photography and enter competitions nationally and internationally and, and fortunate to win an abundance of medals, but they don't pay the bills. Everybody that's walking past, whether they want a picture or not, will, will see your artwork and, and it seems to make them smile. And if they're smiling, they're taking more of an interest in my work, which is great. And then hopefully they spend some pennies too. It's an amazing place, it's a great spot. You can't ask for better views. So spoilt for choice around here. We've got the sea, the pier, we've got the mountains, rivers. We've got absolutely everything. So you don't really need to go too far to get what I need. All these little things are really useful for me. Um, shells, um, the texture in wood, the wood grain. My stuff, I suppose, is creative photography. People say it's quirky. I've heard lots of people say they like it because it's different. And to see that people want them on their walls in their own homes is just, it's just wow. I, I can't actually believe it. I can just see something like the seagulls pinching somebody's donut and hundreds of images will come to my mind, you know, and then I'll go away and make a picture up. It's not like a job because it, it's like getting paid to do your hobby. People are here because they love Clandidno. They love coming up and down the pier. So, so it's just, I'm, I'm loving it, absolutely loving it. Lynn is not alone on the pier. From promenade to pierhead, it's home to numerous independent vendors. 
selling everything from ice cream to jewelry, beach balls to soft toys. Well, there's a great variety on the pier, all obviously different. We all have our own license, so we all try not to tread on each other's toes. But there is a great selection of shops on the pier, uh, ones that you don't really find on the high street, all independents, no big brands. So there's quite a lot going on, and they're all little gemstones, and people find them very, very interesting. Robin Pritchard and his partner, Aira Williams, were tempted from retirement to become part of the pier's family of stall holders. Together, they run a popular soft toy shop. We've been here about five years. We came here from Anglesey to basically retire. Hi, Hello, John. John. Oh, yeah, you're right. They're going to film this. We've got the camera on today. Oh, no. yeah. Don't say anything rude, John. Just in case you'll be on telly. <laughs> <laughs> when I did retire, I was looking forward to sitting down in the garden and doing nothing at all. Well, the time came. We had about 18 months of having weekends here, days out there. And I'm the last person in the world to actually think that you know what, I'm actually bored. So we took a walk in the pier one day and then we saw a shop for rent. We took the opportunity and we haven't looked back. These are supposed to be the in thing at the moment, aren't they? Yes. There we Thank go, okay, you. six pound. Thank you very much Have indeed. Nice Thank day. you, and you. Thank you, bye bye. When we took the shop over, it was nothing what we sell now. We've changed the shop and make it work for us. You open the door in the morning, it's a blast of colour and it makes you smile. I miss it, it's like Christmas morning when you do all this, because I forget what I've ordered. Um, so it's really, really exciting to see what's in the box. <laughs> I do all the purchasing, because um, I wouldn't trust Robin because he'd ordered the wrong thing. So no, I'm in charge of the purchasing. And I like to see what I'm ordering, because I th think Robin just ordered some random stuff I wouldn't sell, so. I never ever thought for a minute that we'd take a shop on the pier of all places, but it turns out that is one of the best ideas that I've had, and uh, I should have done it years ago. Needs a cuddle, look at <gasps> wow. that. Nice teddy. Look at that. Aww. Hello. Probably the only time in my life I've come to work and enjoy coming to work. And then we'll put the teddy in the bag for you as well. There we go. Thank you very much. The great thing about living and working in Sunday, though, is that you're actually in an environment where everybody's on a, in a buoyant mood. Everybody's elated because they're on holiday. So there's, there's quite a bouncy feel to it all. You know, it's the only place I've ever worked where everybody's joyous and happy. It's just a, a, a lovely, lovely place. I think everybody else who lives by the sea must feel the same. You don't see many people leaving fishing ports or villages, you know. There's an attraction to the sea. You just, it, it's, it's, there's a connection there and you just can't get away from it. It's just there. The magnificent views and a fondness of the sea play a big part in the lives of the men and women who choose to spend their days on the pier. We've always had an affinity with the sea. I've always gone fishing ever since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. I've worked on fishing boats in the past. I don't know where it's come from. I've got no idea, but I've always had this affinity with the sea, you know. This is the, the first job every morning, get the trays out onto the front, throw the stuff all over, cut down on your profits. <laughs> Alan is responsible for one of the pier's most recognisable kiosks and is an integral part of any visit to the seaside. The schooner was a pub on the seafront in Rill, going back maybe 10, 12 years or so when they demolished it. And Adam, who owns the pier, rescued the schooner canopies and kept them. And then when I came on here, he, we, we had a problem with the sunshine and he offered us a canopy. Yes, sir, how can I help you? You don't know? <laughs> well, if you don't know, I can't help you. <laughs> Originally, it was festival seafood, but when we put that up, people referred to it as the schooner, so it's now festival seafood, the schooner. So, it's, yeah, it's done me a favour. It's like Christmas, this, every day. Beautiful lobsters, look at them. Perfect. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. And now I'm just going to destroy one and chop it up. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is my third year on the pier. Prior to this, I was doing it at the food festivals and things like that. This opportunity came up, said they were looking for someone to do seafood on here, so here we are, doing the seafood and sticking to it, I hope. <laughs> Long may it continue. You should be able to go to the seaside and you should be able to eat good seafood at the seaside and you should be able to get at least fresh crab, fresh lobster, oysters, things like that, you should be able to get that as a minimum, you know. But it is very important that we keep these traditions going. You know, this is something that could be lost if we're not very careful and we don't want to lose it, we want to keep it going. I love crab, there's nothing like it anywhere. Lobster's lovely, don't get me wrong, but it, just when it comes to no, crab every time. <laughs> I absolutely have a passion for seafood. I love it, everything to do with it. Where it comes from, how it's grown, how you cook it, how it's eaten, everything, all parts of it, you know? I just love it, it's brilliant. Seaside tradition is at the heart of Llandidno and is especially evident on the pier. Over the coming weeks, we will meet more of the men and women of this seaside town and follow as the shutters reopen and life returns to the pier. Next time, we meet a pair of busy hoteliers. Generally, the day starts about half six in the morning. Breakfast service, you know, we're going to get breakfasts cooked and ready. Can I take that with you, please, huh? Fridays are always a busy day because you've had people in for the week and then you have people who come for the weekend. And the boatmen who take visitors on a unique trip. This is what I enjoy and this is what I know really well, you know. Every day is different on the boat. Coming around the Great Orm, you'll always notice something new. <laughs>